Welcome to Medicated Housewife DIY. In today's DIY video, jaw-dropping, Dollar Tree, spring decor, easy and upscale DIYs, plus trash to treasure, hello again, my Dollar Tree DIY loving friends. Are you looking for creative and affordable ways to decorate your home this spring? Well, look no further than these amazing spring decor Dollar Tree DIYs. Everything from upscale decor to trash to treasure transformations, this video is packed with must-see tips, hacks, and ideas that will take your home decor to the next level. I'll show you how to make your home look luxurious using Dollar Tree and other low-cost or even free supplies, and transform your space into a spring oasis. Don't miss out on these easy and upscale DIYs that will impress your guests and make your home look stunning. Let's go DIY together. So stick around, let's go make some stuff and jump right into this. For this first DIY, I'm using this glass cylinder vase from Dollar Tree and this roll of rattan that I picked up on Amazon and I will link it for you in the description box below. I'm also using this faux leather that I have used before and I'll link that below as well, but you can always use the faux leather from Dollar Tree if of course you can find it. I am just not that lucky. I cut a three inch wide strip of the rattan to fit around the base of the vase and I do want to come clean and admit to you guys that this is my maiden voyage using rattan. I'm a rookie and I did not know that if you soaked it before using it, it would be easier and less messy to work with. So I'm owning that before you guys tell me I'm doing it wrong. I know, I know I'm doing it wrong. I'll be better next time. I'm using a small amount of hot glue to attach the rattan to the vase or the vase, however you want to say it, trying to not let the hot glue be too visible. I use some along the bottom and the top of that rattan as well as the seam to close it up. I cut the leather into thin strips, a little over an inch wide, and I need to attach two strips together to be long enough to cover the entire diameter of the vase. I'm also going to be folding each strip of the leather over on both of the edges so that it will end up looking more like a leather strap and not a piece of leather repair tape like it really is, if that makes any sense. You don't need to be exact with the widths of the leather or the rattan. This is really just about your personal preference, so whatever is going to work best for you. Then I use some hot glue to attach our newly created leather straps to both the bottom edge of that rattan and the top edge. And that's going to give it a more finished look so that those rough rattan edges are not going to be seen. And that's literally all there is to this first DIY. I styled it on a candle holder, but it's not attached. And I'm showing it with a lit candle inside, but you could also use this as a vase. There is something so classy and high-end looking about leather and rattan, and this could not get any easier. I think it's an elegant winner. This next DIY is a trash to treasure using an old tequila bottle from my recycling bin. I like tequila, don't judge me. I already spray painted it with Rust-Oleum paint and primer in a gloss white color. I measured it with a string and it's about 11 and a half inches around and I am using that faux leather again. I want the leather to be about three and a half inches wide, but because this is self-adhesive leather, I need to cut it to twice that width and then fold it over onto itself so that the leather is on both sides and there is no more sticky part. So I used a pencil and a ruler to measure out where I was going to cut the leather and then where I was going to fold that leather in half. Then I wrap the piece of leather around the middle of the bottle and mark where it overlaps so that I can trim that part off. I want the edges of the leather to meet around the bottle but not overlap it. So now my edges meet up and I take the two top corners and I fold them down so that it kind of looks like the bottle is wearing a suit <laughs> and we made little lapels or something like that. And then with the lapels folded down, I'm going to mark with a pencil four dots that are going to be spaced a half an inch apart and we're going to be making four holes through both sides of the folded leather on those points where we marked it with a pencil. So first I use an X-Acto knife and then I'm going to use this little mini screwdriver that I have to make the holes go through both sides of the piece of the leather. 
I cut a piece of this beige colored suede cording that I had in my stash, but I do think you can get something very similar to this at Dollar Tree. And I'm going to be lacing up the leather around the bottle. Basically, like we're making this little mini corset that's gonna fit around the middle of the bottle. That's the concept anyway, and I'm hoping that makes it clearer and more understandable. So we're gonna start the lacing from the bottom and crisscross until we get to the top. I it did find it a little bit easier to do most of that lacing with the leather off of the bottle as opposed to having the leather on it the whole time that you're trying to lace it up because it gets in the way. I use a couple of dabs of hot glue on the top and the bottom back of the leather and also on the sides just to help hold it in place on the bottle. And off camera, I did relace those two top holes so that the cord was going into the holes instead of coming out of the holes. And this way it was much easier to just stuff those little ends of the laces down into the leather so that the ends are now out of view. I grabbed the top of one of those round cardboard gift boxes from Dollar Tree and because my bottle fit in it perfectly, I used some more of the self-adhesive faux leather and covered the cardboard box top with it. First, cutting a strip to go around the outside rim of the box top, and then another strip to cover the inside rim. And then finally, I traced the bottom of the box top and cut out a circle of the faux leather to fit inside of that box top. It was not the neatest way to cover the cardboard with some edges and stuff that were showing at that point, but using scrap pieces of the leather and some of the suede cording that I had at the end off camera, I did end up pulling that all together and making it work, you'll see later. I took the leftover two side leather strap that I had and I decided to use that with some suede cord to make a little collar for the neck of my bottle. Okay, I don't know what to call this, but it's giving me Playboy Bunny meets Marlboro Man vibes. <laughs> We're all over the map here, but whatever it is, I think it's very cool and even a bit trendy looking. Also, totally a functional bottle because there's no paint or anything on the inside, so you could use this to serve cocktails or just leave it out and let it look pretty. This next DIY is another trash to treasure. I'm recycling this old tin can I used in another project where we made it look like a birch stump. But today I'm going to cover this can with moss from Dollar Tree. I'm using hot glue to attach the moss and basically I'm just going to keep going over and over the can until there is no more bald patches and it is thoroughly covered in the moss. I do love the way moss looks, but I hate the mess that it makes. Moss is truly the glitter of the floral craft world, in my opinion anyway. I didn't love the way the top of the can looks, so using some jute twine, which you can get at Dollar Tree, I began wrapping the top of the can with the jute, using hot glue to attach it until you really couldn't see any more of that white lip of the top of the can. And then I still didn't love the way the top looks, so now I grabbed this thicker jute I had from Amazon and I will link it for you below. I used hot glue to wrap the thicker rope once around the outside of the can and I think that helped make the top of the can just look a little better. I cut six pieces of the Dollar Tree jute twine that were a bit longer than double the height of the can. And then I took each of the six pieces of jute, I folded them in half and I tied a knot at the top, leaving a small loop at the top over the knot um, at the top of each of them, as you can see me do right here. Then I glue the loop on the inside of the can so that all the knots rest on the outside top lip of that can. I did end up securing those knots in place at the top outside of the can with some hot glue anyway, just to make sure that they stayed in place. And I am spacing out my um, six loops with the two pieces of twine on them. I'm spacing them out evenly on the can. Next, I take one piece of one of the two string sets and one piece from the two string set that's right next to it, and I tie them together into a regular knot like you can see me do here. So I am taking one piece of string from each two piece set and tying them together in a knot, connecting them. I do this around the whole perimeter of the can. 
Then when they've all been tied in the first row, I repeat that on a second row of knots the exact same way. When the row is complete, I do another row the exact same way until my last knots go all the way around the bottom of the can. It sounds much more complicated than it actually is and once you see the pattern going, it's really, really simple to continue it. Lastly, I trim the leftover ends and glue them flat to the bottom of the can. And this is my spring recycled tin can DIY. And I love how easy this is and what a lovely little English garden type feel it has to it. This would be lovely on a windowsill with some greenery or flowers and it's just so earthy and spring-like and basically it's practically free. For this next DIY, we're using these jumbo craft sticks I got at Home Depot, but I can link something similar below and I'm also using more of that rattan that I got on Amazon, which I will also link for you below. I start out by marking and cutting 10 craft sticks to six inches long, and I am cutting the round edges off of all of them, and I'm using a scissors to cut them. They cut really pretty easily. And I'm gonna be using them to make coasters. We're making two coasters, and each of the coasters will have five of these six inch craft sticks. Plus, I'm going to cut four more craft sticks in addition to that down to five inches long. And we're gonna use two of those five inch long ones on the bottom of each of the coasters. That's how we're going to hold the five craft sticks together in the coaster. I'm using tight bond quick and thick wood glue to attach those two shorter craft sticks to the back of each of my coasters. And then I'm going to give them a little bit of time for the glue to sort of set up. I've cut the rattan into squares slightly larger than the coasters, and I'm going to use some small dabs of hot glue on the thicker areas of the rattan to attach it to the craft sticks. And once that rattan is securely in place, I turn the coasters over, and I'm gonna trim the rattan down to the same size as the coasters. Now, initially, I was using this paper raffia roll that I will link for you below. I was using it to sort of sew the edge of the coasters to look a little bit like a whip stitch kind of a look around the holes in the rattan and around the edge of the coaster. However, I finished one of these with the whip stitching and I hated it, like hated it. So I went and I cut out all of that raffia that I had sewed and I got rid of it and I came up with a plan B because, you know, I am all about the plan B when it comes to crafting. So after removing all the sewn in raffia, I grabbed this bag of small craft sticks from Walmart, but I will link something comparable for you below. These are narrow and remind me of wooden coffee stirrers, which you could probably substitute as well. I grabbed four of these and laid out a frame around the coaster, trimming the pieces that were too long to fit neatly around the edge. Next, I took that roll of paper raffia again, and I wrapped each of the four pieces of my frame fully with the raffia, just wrapping it around. So they were totally covered in it, using hot glue every so often to secure the raffia in place. And afterwards, I repeated that process with four more frame pieces for the second coaster. Once the frame pieces were fully wrapped, I used some hot glue to attach them to the outline of each of my coasters to complete my look. And these are my rattan coasters. I know these are a little large for coasters, but I really like the natural, almost boho look to them. They remind me of sunny, warm weather, and who couldn't use a little bit of that right now? I do plan on sealing them with some waterproof sealer as well. Okay, it doesn't get any more trash to treasure than this DIY. I literally went into my recycling trash and pulled out these soda cans, or maybe you guys call them pop. I don't wanna debate it. You use whatever you're drinking. I washed them and used a can opener to totally remove the tops of the cans. You can use any color can, it really doesn't matter. I will say that I had trouble trying to remove the tops of those energy drink or spiked seltzer size cans, so maybe don't try and use those. And this is not a new idea by any means. It has been around for a while, but it's new to me. And I wanted to give it a try. Next, we're gonna use our hands to crush the cans, not totally crush, just here and there in certain spots. And you want them to be able to still stand upright, but just dent them enough to make them kind of interesting looking. 
Next, I'm going to take them outside to spray paint them. I used Rust-Oleum Paint and Primer in the white gloss, the flat black, the stone gray satin, and the fossil satin, all of which I will link for you below. And here are my crushed can of vases or pencil holders or whatever you want to put in them. Now, do I love them? No. But if I had had all matte finish paints for all the colors, I think I'd have liked them a lot more. The closest to this is the flat black, and of them all, the black are my favorites. They definitely have a modern kind of pop art sculpture feel to me. But as usual, I want to know what you think. Let me know in the comments which one of these jaw-dropping spring decor DIYs and trash to treasures is your favorite and why. I really do love hearing from you. I want to thank you all for watching. Your support means so much to me and I am thankful each and every day for all of you. And if you've enjoyed any of these jaw-dropping spring home decor DIYs, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing. I would love to have you here. Until next time, thanks for watching. My name is Sarah. I'm the medicated housewife and crafting is my medication.